Hi, everyone, and welcome to Authentically With Me With Coffee or Tea podcast and Authentically Nisi on YouTube. This is another session in our series, Coffee and Conversations. And my guest today is an awesome, awesome woman who I've known for over five years. Her name is Phyllis Thompson. And Phyllis is a certified personal trainer and nutritionist whose passion is wellness transformation and helping women 40 plus to navigate hormonal changes through nutrition. I'm sorry. Phyllis absolutely believes women can defy aging and age beautifully, gracefully with longevity through proper fitness and nutrition. So today on the podcast and video cast, we want to welcome you, Phyllis, and we want you to speak to us today um, on this topic, which has so greatly impacted my life, honestly, and I'm um, being over 40, it's been a beast trying to handle hormonal changes. So I want to thank you so much for coming on to our um, platform today. And so here we are, everybody. Welcome, Phyllis Thompson. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's my nervous wave because I'm nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous, Phyllis. This is an awesome opportunity for us to really share on a really seriously important topic um, for women. Um, because how many of us as women, I mean, even at the age of 35, start struggling with issues with our hormones, our weight gains, weight loss, even hair loss, even just so many losses and pluses added on and taken away from our lives as we are growing older and we're aging gracefully, as you say. So tell us what is up with our hormones and when we reach those ages where our hormones begin to change, what is really going on? Can you give us, shed some light on that for us? Absolutely. So um, the age at which your your hormones start to fluctuate depends on your own bio-individuality and familial history. So if you start to notice changes early on, it's more likely that your aunts, mothers, and other women in your family um, have experienced the same thing. But what happens is, so the two sex hormones are progesterone and estrogen. Mm -hmm. And what happens as we, after 30, usually is when it starts, um, they will start to fluctuate. And that causes all sorts of imbalances in the body, which present differently for each woman. So for me, when I started having sleep trouble, that was the first indication that something was going on with me. And I didn't even initially connect it to a hormonal imbalance. I just thought, I'm just not getting full night's sleep anymore. I'm not really sure what's happening. And then um, during my study as a nutritionist, I came across some information about perimenopause and I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) So that is what's going on. Um, And the difference in in the stages are perimenopause is when you still have a cycle and your estrogen has started to drop. And then um, once you've gone 12 months without a cycle consecutively, you're officially in menopause. Okay, so let's talk about these weird names like estrogen and testosterone and progesterone. Um, kind of give us a little background on what those things are and how they affect a woman's body. So estrogen is, um, it's kind of what makes, it's what makes us a girl, right? right. Mm-hmm. So um, we, it helps regulate our cycle and then progesterone will kick in around the time that our cycle starts to come around. We It's a, it's a call to cycle for a reason, right? right? So the first 14 days, progesterone is not really playing a huge role. And then right around the time that you start to feel weepy, moody, bloated, progesterone is kicked in and she's rearing her ugly head and she's wreaking all kinds of havoc because she's preparing your body to become pregnant. That's the entire purpose of us having a period. Mm-hmm. Um, so then when that starts to drop, things just change and you'll notice your moods change along with that. Generally, when you're not on your your cycle or your period, those hormones stay pretty much in balance if we're eating properly for that. Um, testosterone, we, all of us have testosterone, male and female. Um, women have it in much lower numbers than men, which is why they build muscle faster and they carry less body fat generally. Um, but even that's a number that can be manipulated with proper nutrition and lifting weights, by the way, (laughs) because it has to do with growth hormone. So um, there's several things in play there, and those hormones will fluctuate slightly each month, 
each week throughout the month um, and how you eat plays a huge role in how it presents in your body. Okay. So talk about the nutrition side of it, because, you know, when we were in our twenties, well, I know for myself, let me just speak for me. When I was in my twenties, I ate whatever I wanted to, but I was really active. I was a mother of two small children. So I was always out and about doing things. I was also a hairstylist. I was on my feet 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, I walked to and from work because that was my choice. Cause I wanted to stay <laughs> nice and slim. I was also please forgive me. This is pre Jesus. I was a smoker and uh, <laughs> I used to be a smoker too. <laughs> I was a smoker and I smoked almost a pack a day. And I, also, yes, and I also drank, you know, alcohol, you know, because that was like my meal, honestly, when I got home. Um, so, and it was my wind down time too, you know, <laughs> right. So, um, but over the years when, you know, after I quit all of that, I quit the smoking, I quit the drinking, <clears throat> um, my body started changing. I noticed a lot of weight gain coming on, especially when I ate certain foods. So can you just kind of talk to us about nutrition? I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let you talk and tell us how nutrition affects our bodies when it comes down to hormones. So, well, it affects it in so many ways. As we get older, first of all, we start our metabolism slows down and we start start losing bone and muscle. Mm. Um, so, of course, with the change in metabolism means we can't eat what we used to eat. Um, I used to eat whatever I wanted as well. And most 20 year olds can. Um, but as we get older, the change in hormones starts to play a role in that. Um, nutrition is so important because you don't realize when you're younger that that old phrase, you are what you eat, mm -hmm. is not just a phrase. It is scientifically true. What our cells are made of is fueled and they're built from what we put into our bodies. So if we're eating a lot of processed foods, then you can imagine those cells aren't gonna move as fast, right? Which is why we're sluggish because they're not getting what they need. They need the carbs, they need the protein, they need the fat. Those macronutrients are what our cells are made up of. Mm -hmm. And if you're getting the right things, like for instance, fat, in the, I think it was the 80s, they went through this non-fat craze, and that was one of the worst messages they could have sent to women because we need fats for our hormones. Fats help regulate our hormones, and our hormones are messengers of our endocrine system. So if they aren't functioning properly, we'll start having things like adrenal fatigue, which regulates our, our ovaries and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we won't metabolize food the way we're supposed to. It will be stored instead of used. So, and especially if you have a high processed diet devoid of nutrients that your body needs, then you, you can't function properly. So um, highly processed foods spike hot flashes. Sugar mm. spikes hot flashes. Caffeine spikes hot flashes and it disrupts your sleep cycle. If you're not getting enough sleep, your hunger hormone system is all out of whack and it's gonna tell you to eat when you're not really hungry. So there's so many things at play there that most people don't realize. Um, I'm trying to think of a really good example and I, so many things are coming to me right now, like broccoli. Broccoli is one of the best vegetables that you can eat and it helps, form, it helps balance your hormones. And women don't know that, right. right? So we think, and that's why I try to tell women when, when my goal is to educate so that when we make a choice about food, it doesn't come from a place of deprivation. It comes from a place of empowerment right. because now I have the power to decide how my body is going to function. Wow. Did I answer your question? I feel like I said a bunch of you stuff. You did. You did. <laughs> and you also gave me this big like, aha moment. Like, information empowers me to make the right decisions like instead of feeling like i can't have it's okay i know how i know if i eat that donut it's going to taste good but it's going to spike hot flashes right mm -hmm. do i want to feel like that do i want to deal with that you you are now you now have the power to choose because you know what it's going to do to you instead of I can't have it. I'm on a diet. That feels horrible. Right. Instead of, do I want to have it? Because I know what it's going to do. That's a powerful feeling. It is. It absolutely is. It gives you the uh, ability to choose what's best for you. And yes. when we get in this age, 
like me. I, I'm not ashamed to say I'm 56. When we get past 46 40, over here, right? <laughs> we tend to want to make better choices because we're thinking longevity. We're thinking down the road. We're thinking, how am I going to feel 20 years from now? Um, yes. We're thinking about our family members, our other female family members who may have not had great health, right? And we don't want to pass that along to our children and our children's children that we're going to do the same things that they did because most of honestly African American families have poor diets like we have poor diets and it comes from way back when we're not going to go into that whole slave well I mean there's the reason and most people don't know that there's a reason even I as a black woman was oblivious to just how important our history is because it definitely has shaped so much of our current lives even if it's even if we weren't direct like we weren't slaves sorry i forgot to turn my phone off and my daughter's blowing me up Um, um we weren't slaves right so it's it's not really we don't really have that direct correlation if if you know what i mean so we can't pull from an experience to understand why our lives are the way they are but our families didn't have healthy nutritious food and the only things they could do was celebrate with each other by cooking for each other Right. right so our ingredients weren't the best and we didn't learn until in the last recent years the last few decades how important nutrition was to longevity Right. Um, you spoke about family members in the way they age. They didn't have the information, unfortunately. Right. Um, and that's what part of my passion is. So many people, even still, you'd be surprised, don't have the information. Mm-hmm. There are parts of the world, this country, just this country alone. We're not going to talk about the world because that's that's a whole other issue. But there are parts of this country alone that people still don't have the information. They still don't have the proper nutrition coming to their towns. They have to drive two towns over just to get healthy food. So it's really sad, but we are in the information age. And I feel like if I am able to show people how to make some of these choices that um, are within their budgets in some cases, they will be, they'll know, okay? I have the options now and I can make better choices and it doesn't have to be so hard um my mother is not aging well and a lot of it is she just didn't know Mm -hmm. simple things like weight bearing exercises can prevent osteoporosis there are a lot a ton of women that don't know that Mm -hmm. and that's a simple easy preventable thing go for a walk Mm -hmm. do a light jog and you could literally change how you age lifting weights isn't about getting bulky or being a bodybuilder it's for me, it started as being able to get up and down from off the floor. Mm-hmm. Not so many elderly people that lift weights now is so that they keep their freedom longer. So you don't end up in a nursing home way before you're supposed you're meant to be. Mm-hmm. Aging doesn't this second half of our lives does not have to be tired, bogged down, headaches, fatigue, irritability. Our kids are grown. We should be thriving. <laughs> exactly right. And let's speak to that because I think a lot of women not just African-American women, but just women in a, as a whole, when we get over the 40 threshold and beyond, we start kind of hanging it up. And I know there is this whole saying that the 40, 50 is the new 40 and 40 is the new 30, but no, let us just celebrate. I've heard I've heard a life coach, her name is Kwabi. She said, let's just celebrate being who we are at this moment. Like 50 is the new 50, 40 is the new okay. 40. 60 it really is. 50, is. Right? This age is the new this age. Right. Right. Because look at how women aged, like my mother's era. Right. Um, women in their 40s didn't look like us. <laughs> women right. in their 50s didn't look like us. Right. They were much bigger, stressed out, right. not like they were not really enjoying life. In in my opinion, the majority of them, I'm not going to say all, that's a huge generalization, but um, the majority of them were not thriving. Right. And we should be. Right. And my experience, the women that I have been around, and I come from a, a poorer background where I grew up in the projects and, 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 you know, my grandmother, you know, she, she lived outside of the projects, but even the women that we were around that I was surrounded with, they were um, always on the struggle bus because they were single mothers taking care of 
a lot of children on their own. And so yes. they were not happy because they were always struggling. My mom herself even, you know, injured her back working two jobs, taking care of five children and had a degenerative disc in her back and had disability in her early thirties. I mean, this right. all happened because of the circumstance and the situations and lack of knowledge. Right. right knowledge of how you can do and be better and so i'm so thankful for this platform because it really your knowledge and expertise can help women to understand that where you are you may not feel your best but it is a wonderful opportunity to start now to kind of right. almost retrace your steps and kind of live again at this age right. and this time so exactly. let's talk to us about how we can do that how can women our age start to reverse reverse aging so first um we need to start with the easiest part and that's our nutrition um i always recommend women go to their doctors and get a full hormonal panel right get that done but that's that may not necessarily be accessible to some women right um so start with your nutrition that part you can control mm -hmm. and i don't want when i say start with your nutrition i don't want for women who have had don't like dieting or have had bad experiences with dieting to in any way think I'm talking about dieting. I want you to look at this in the, in the lenses of, I am about to hack my own body, right? So that I age the way I want to age. Because in my mind, my children are grown. This is my second, second, what is it? young adulthood in my right. opinion right. like people are like you're always doing this this and that that's right my kids are grown there's no reason i shouldn't be out there experiencing life and have the energy to do so right. so start with your nutrition processed foods while they may taste good they they taste good for a reason because scientists and manufacturers have collaborated to ultra process the foods so that you keep wanting to buy them mm -hmm. so instead pay attention to how your body feels when you eat certain things. And if that means, um, we already know processed foods are bad. So just, just start eliminating them and it can be hard. So start with one thing at a time, one right? A time. Um, I'm trying to think of a really popular processed food. It's been so long. <laughs> soda, 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 holy <laughs> mackerel, ladies, soda. First of all, soda is nothing but sugar and chemicals, right? So sugar, what does it do? It causes insulin resistance. We all know what that is. If, if you've ever been on a weight loss journey, you know what insulin resistance is. And one of the things that fixing your hormones will do is reverse insulin resistance, right? Mm -hmm. um, the more sugar you put in your body, it is like a drug, the more you're going to want. But sugar spikes hot flashes. Mm -hmm. So if you struggle with hot flashes, that should be the first thing you, you start on is working on eliminating your sugar. And you don't do it you don't have to do it all at once because I know firsthand that trying to take all the sugar out in one day can not only lead you into a spiral into a bucket of ice cream, but it can also make you depressed because right. it affects the pleasure sensors of the brain. Right. So it'll make you depressed. It'll make you irritable. Nobody will want to be around you right. and you'll throw in the towel in a day or two. Like I can't do this. Right. So, so if you're drinking sodas, I would start with keeping track of how many you're getting and just start eliminating one a day. Right. So sugar, soda, uh, sugar and candy, cookies, potato chips, potato chips have sugar, you know, all of these things that have sugar and you're thinking, oh, I just had one soda, but you forgot that you had some chips, some cookies, you had some cereal, which had soda, I mean, sugar in it. You had tea with honey. And so that honey is sugar and all of this sugar you have piled on top of, on top of, and you wonder why you don't have mental clarity. You can't think straight. You're sad when you can't get it. You're irritable. <laughs> you have that hangry moment. And, and it's all due to, to sugar also. And I do know for sure in my family, sugar in anybody's family, sugar causes cancerous type growths to start happening in your body. It and does. So, so, yeah, speaking to the mental side of it, I think that um, setting your mind, because the mind is the main thing to even get you starting to eat right. So can right. you address a little bit about how nutrition can even help your mind? Absolutely. So uh, sugar, as you touched on, it causes inflammation in the body mm -hmm. and inflammation is the breeding ground for cancers. Mm -hmm. So um, imagine what it's doing to 
your mental space, right? You get lethargic, you're tired, you can't think straight, you you just have no clarity, you're confused. Um, it's gonna affect your mood, you're gonna go through the highs and lows. So um, it, the mind is is so important because when you're able to think clearly about what you want, because sugar's a drug, like you said, you go through these mood swings when you can't get it. And it made me think of somebody that's actually on drugs. Like you can't get your fix. You're not feeling good. You're not happy, right? Um, you're gonna go through the crashes, the energy crashes from not having it. And then you're overly tired. So just being able to clear your head of that fog, that processed food fog is basically what it is. So you can think clearly about your goals and wrap your mind around the fact that this isn't a diet, this is, this is a lifestyle and this is you taking your power back. Don't think of it as a diet. I'm taking my power back because I wanna feel good. Right. Like when I eat bad, I can feel it in my body. Mm -hmm. um, and But I make the, I make the conscious, conscious choice if I'm gonna do it. So right. then it's like I have the power over what I'm choosing instead of the, the, the food itself right. is, has the power over me. Mm -hmm. that, that feels so much better than, oh, I couldn't resist. <laughs> exactly. Just while you were talking, I was thinking about how changing your mind truly does transform your life. Like it truly transforms how your life is shaped is based on how you think. And so I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. I just, I, I really have something I, I want to share with you post this video. Um, okay. <laughs> but, but tell us like, um, what 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 steps can we take like practically to to start supplementing our eating plans not diet but our eating habits so that we can just like you said first of all take some of the sugar out what other things can we do to help us nutritionally to kind of talk about you know balancing these things hold on a holistic level instead of taking um false supplementation or false diets right false pills and all these other pills that the marketplace right. sells um, to help us women nutritionally. How can we do that? So if you can um, go to your doctor and have a hormonal panel done and find out where your, um, where your deficiencies lie, right? Okay. Where your hormones are. Um, and then you can supplement from there. How much supplementation you need is going to be based on where you're deficient. And that is a question for your doctor, but you can start with vitamin B vitamin E, vitamin K, getting leafy green vegetables. Um, pomegranate is actually another really great one for your hormones. You could, I recommend, because pomegranates aren't always in season, so mm -hmm. I recommend the pomegranate extract, not necessarily the juice, read the labels. Added sugars are in a lot of those juices and the manufacturers are sneaky enough mm -hmm. to label things in a way to make you think that this is good for you because it's a pomegranate juice, but they've put sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So now you're, and it's got very little pomegranate juice in it. So yeah. you're, you're defeating the purpose. Right. Um, magnesium is a really good supplement, but that's a question for your doctor about how much you, you need to supplement with. Um, taking out the processed food, caffeinated drinks. If you like coffee, I like coffee. I won't have coffee after three because it will affect your sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, it's going to affect your hunger hormones. Getting half your body weight in ounces of water. Um, That's a tough one. It, I know. Mm -hmm. I know it is. I have to intentionally and I have to do, I have to force myself to do it. Um, so what I do is I buy a little Mio and I'll do like a little squirt or I'll do um, lemon and cucumber. For some reason, the combination of lemon and cucumber make the water a little bit sweet. I'm not really sure why it does that. Okay. Um, so I like that one. You can also put mint in your water. Find ways to jazz your water up mm -hmm. um, if you struggle with it. And I generally will force myself to have a cup of water before I have my coffee. That way because coffee is also dehydrating. Mm -hmm. So that way I've gotten a cup of water and I'm ready because I'll reheat my coffee up several times a day. Mm -hmm. And I have to, that affects how much water I get. Um, we did caffeinated drinks, we did sugar, alcohol. Alcohol mm -hmm. causes, it spikes hot flashes. Mm -hmm. So ladies, I know we love our wine, 
But while you're going through the process of figuring out what foods trigger certain hormonal responses, I would commit to taking it out because it causes hormonal imbalances all throughout the body, not just with spiking hot flashes. Right. And it can disturb your seat, your sleep. And it's sugar. Right. Well, let me <laughs> just say something about wine. <laughs> wine was my friend. <laughs> it was my friend. She was your friend of me. She was a yeah, friend of me. She was a friend of me. She was truly <laughs> a friend of me. And how I knew that wine was not good for me, because I know a lot of people say, oh, a little glass of red wine every now and then doesn't harm you. But if you drink white every night, white every night, white every night, it <laughs> kind of does down. <laughs> to wind down, right? But I found out that wine or alcohol or whatever is contained in wine caused heart palpitations. And I know that sometimes when we hit a certain age, we start having palpitations. So I, I want, can you address a little bit of that and what happens about our heart palpitations and, and you know, what foods can cause, because I'm telling you, I, I have found out a lot of foods cause me to have heart palpitations. So sugar. This the sugar. Sugar causes heart palpitations. Um, caffeine, alcohol. I'm trying to think of, there's another one that I was actually surprised to find out it caused heart palpitations. Um, but it's different for everybody. It so is. whatever food that was that triggers that for you may not trigger it for somebody else. Right. So that's why I say you have to you have to be you have to hack your own bio individuality basically. Um, I don't know what it is in the alcohol other than it ha it has a sedating effect. Mm -hmm. So I think it it affects the it thins the blood first of all. So I think it has something to do with that and how the blood is flowing through the heart and out of the aorta. So I don't know the science behind that, but it because of the blood, I believe, and the, the effect that it has on thinning of the blood and sugar being a, um, I can't think of the word right now, not a suppressant, the opposite. A stimulant, mm -hmm. sheesh, I don't know why that word escaped me, mm -hmm. being a stimulant, that's also going to affect your blood pressure, right? right. So that's going to make the blood flow even faster. So those things that affect blood and um, blood flow is my belief is why it causes heart palpitations. Okay. So um, you mentioned some of the vitamins that we can take for supplementation. Do you have um, any other um, information about how we can start to supplement um, our lives as we go forward with um, trying to figure out this whole hormone and health. Start with your food first. Food first. Um, I always say start with nutrition first because um, so the supplementation industry is a money maker, right? So there's so many research studies and blah blah blah. The thing about research studies, if you have, you have to look and see who funded it. Mm. Right. So most people don't know that they'll be like, oh, I read a study that this is good for me. And I'm like, so who who paid for that study? Right. So you right. need to look at that. Right. Dairy is inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Women don't want to give up cheese. I don't know why we don't want to give up cheese. We love our cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we don't want to give up cheese. Um, I mean, I get it because it took me a really long time to get there, but I don't even think I eat cheese anymore. I mean, not to say I won't. If I go out to a restaurant and there's a nice cheese tray, I may ha I'm gonna have some cheese, mm -hmm. but I don't buy it. It's not in my refrigerator. Um, you also want to have iodine-rich foods because, in case you, most people don't pay attention to this, I didn't. When the sea salt craze started, we stopped using iodized salt. Right. So where where are you getting your iodine from? It's so important for regulating your hormones. So you need to eat iodine rich foods. Um, and those are going to be in your leafy green veggies, especially if you are a woman trying to have children. Women with PCOS need to also be really cognizant of what they're eating that affects their hormones. Right. Iodine rich foods are important if you're trying to have a baby. Mm, that's very interesting. I never thought about that once we left iodized and went to pink Himalayan. Right. There's no <laughs> that iodine we that. Removing iodine out of our diet. That is. So and it's weird. an important micronutrient for balancing our hormones. So we need it. Wow. And most people don't even, I, I can guarantee you there's at least 10 women that are watching this. They're like, oh my God, yeah. I did not even realize we yeah. took this out of our nutrition and we need it. So. Okay. That's um, Himalayan why, salt is amazing, but it has no iodine. <laughs> yes. That's why it's so important to 
to have people like you to come out and to give us that kind of information because we're walking around here, we're listening to Dr. Oz and Dr. X and Dr. This and Dr. That and this fitness guru and that fitness guru. And, and, and although they're all good, I'm not saying anything bad about them. Let me just make that disclaimer. What I am saying is that when we need to get information in a nutshell, it seems that we reach all these all of these different places and we make a mix and match combo right. type thing. We for pick ourselves. what it's like uh Burger King, have it your way. We pick right. what we want from it. Right. And then we're like, okay, I'm gonna do all these things together. But I even had to learn that in my business. I had so many coaches I was listening to right. and I was just you end up confused and that yes. causes you to not do anything. Yes. So you get so overwhelmed with information, you're like, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> yeah. And and from from to hear it from me, Miss Diet All, I mean, I have had every diet I think on the planet. I have so gone, I. <laughs> you know, I've tried this diet and that diet, these injections, this and that and that and that, and and none of them seem to stick. But I think the main component for me, which made me follow your program, and I am on Phyllis's program, ladies, what made me follow Phyllis's program so diligently this time, because I've been on several, is that I made up my mind that I wanted to be healthy, that it right. wasn't so much for my vanity's sake, but it was for my health sake. And so I really want anybody who's listening to, to understand podcast or video cast, really understand that you have got to have a mindset shift in order to be successful in any kind of great nutritional hormonal changes, like to really make, make your mind up that this is what you're going to do to follow what you have to follow, to do the steps necessary to have a healthier life um, and to right. live that longevity that you desire to live. Right. Right. So right. it's I mean, I think what women get we get stuck in and I followed every diet too. Um, before I got certified, I think I started with like Doc. Remember when Biggest Loser first came on the scene? Yeah. I bought Dr. Ian's book. I bought um The Biggest Loser. They even had a cookbook. Yeah. I bought that one. Um I went on a Jillian Michaels thing at one time. And of course, then I got involved in Beach Body. And to be honest, ladies. It comes down to, first of all, nutrition mm -hmm. and well, first of all, mindset, second nutrition, because and, and the reason I have I've shifted my focus a lot into hormones because of my age, first of all, but two, because. I think we get so caught up in I feel like I need to lose weight or I need to diet or I need to do that instead of. No, it's not I need to do any of those things. It's I just want to live and enjoy life and feel good. So how about I come from a place of power and yeah. learn? And then I have the option. I make the conscious choice right. of what I'm going to put in my body day after day. That right. feels so much better than I can't have, I can't have, I can't do, I can't do. Right. Because so that's denial, why I, yes, denial makes you feel like, you know, almost as if, if I deny myself this, then if you do better, then I have to reward myself this. And that, <laughs> denial, that denial and reward system, it doesn't work for us over No, time. no, it doesn't come, work for everybody. Right, I mean, I'm, honestly, I how long does it work for though? Deny, reward, deny, reward. Like I, in my own experience, it never worked for me because- It depends I, on the person that's competitive or not. <laughs> okay, okay, that, that will, that, that, I'm not competitive with myself, honestly and truthfully. I don't compete with myself. I just say, I want to eat it. And if I deny myself now, when I lose 10 pounds, I can go and have that. And what I end up doing is over having it. Like I'll right. say, oh, well, I can have a little bit today because I lost 10 pounds. Two weeks right. later, I've gained two pounds. Oh, I can have a little bit because I've only gained two pounds. So right. instead of me thinking now about the pounds I'm gaining and losing, you've helped me to reform my thought process and think about, the gains I'm making with my health. And that's right. a difference. That's a whole right. different way of thinking. That's the reward in itself. Right, right. Right. For me at 46 to, I climbed this mountain like for maybe three or four weeks ago. And mind you, it was hard and it took me a really long time. But at the end of it, for me to be able to say, I just came up 2,000 stairs, 2,722, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> up the side of a mountain at 46 years old and then went down the other side, 
which was another 3.2 miles. And I'm just like, the fact that I could do, I cried at the bottom. Right. I was like, the fact that I could do, like, that's the reward, right? right. Being able to, for people to say, you look so much younger than you are. And for me to be able to say, I feel younger than right. I am. Right. Like, yeah, the compliment is great, but how do you feel? Feel. Right. right. You can look great, but feel crappy. Right. Right. And I've exactly. done that. And I'm, I'm, I honestly do not. And I, because of others saying it, I don't look 56. However, I wasn't, you don't. I felt like I was 66 because my body inside was saying, hey, something's wrong here. You have got to do right. something. And it was causing me to be depressed because I right. like, it affects so how you show up yes. every single day. Yes. Yes. And we've gotten so used to living in a constant state of fatigue with headaches. For, ladies, being nauseous after you eat is not normal. Okay. Yes. Having a headache every day is not normal. Being tired, you don't feel like doing anything irritable, not wanting to be intimate with your partner is not normal. Yes. <laughs> I was going to talk about that because, because we lose the, the essence of being women. And to me, part of our essence, a very important part of our essence is how we feel, how we feel, feel like our sexy. Have you lost your sexy? Yes. yes. You know, because when our hormones change, some of the desires change, right? And yes. Let's just, let's just be transparent. Some okay. of the desires change. <laughs> I'm not and... about that life. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I will, I'm upfront about that. Listen, I am not about the low libido life. Let's. Mm -mm. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we have to do what we need to do to to bring that sexy back. To bring right. that that part of us back that we had back in the day say, oh, that was back then. This is now, but honey, no, we even better now, right? Okay, because like, we ain't getting pregnant, first of all. First of all, we don't <laughs> have to worry about that. Second of all, we can be the very best of ourselves at this time, right? Yes. When we look in the mirror at our full being without any clothes on, we can say, girlfriend, girl, we got this, right? No matter yes. how it appears, you have to feel that thing from the inside. And when you are depressed and downtrodden and you can't think straight and you got headaches and all these things that Phyllis was just talking about, how in the world can you feel like you feel sexy? Right. You give that energy and to your And how partner? can you be fully present in that moment. relationship? Right. Not just the moment, in that relationship. Because right. if you, I remember myself when I was bigger and I wasn't feeling my best all the time, I didn't want to be intimate. And I'm not just talking about the actual act of the sexual act. I'm talking about intimacy in general. Yeah. Intimacy is much more than just the sexual act. Absolutely. It's about the closeness, the kissing, the touching, the embracing, right. the, the PDA. Right. Like when you don't feel good, you don't want that. And that for, uh, for your partner, whether it be male or female, that doesn't feel good to them because then they think it's something they did. Right. 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 But when you're able to be fully comfortable in who you are and you feel good from the inside out because you're feeding your body as such, right. you can be so much closer to the person you love right. and it will change the dynamic of that relationship. Absolutely. I, I really believe that when you feel great and you have mental clarity, your conversation is the beginning of intimacy because your conversation is different with oh, that yeah. partner. And so oh, when yeah. your conversation, conversation is what drew you into the, to the relationship in the beginning. It had to be conversation, right? Absolutely. Right. As, long, well, as well as physicality. It might have been the way you looked well first. As well as <laughs> but the conversation had a huge part in whether or not you were going to continue that right. relationship. So right. conversation is key when you're in a relationship with somebody. Um, it's very key. And so when you don't feel like having a conversation and right. you're taking person away, then how, right. where's the intimacy? Where does it even right. begin? So yeah, so I-, I It's, it's non-existent it. non because existent. whenever that person speaks to you, all that comes out is negativity. I'm tired. That's all you have to give, right? I'm tired. I have a headache. I don't feel I'm like talking right out. now. I I'm just, stressed just stressed out. I'm out. Yes. Can I just Netflix and chill today? You know, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> no, ladies, ladies, right. ladies, we have to you know, come back to ourselves. I think that when right. we have nutritionally 
become imbalanced. We have really lost a sense of ourselves. And exactly. We need to feed ourselves life because we're life givers, right? Right. We are life Absolutely. Givers. And when Absolutely. we lose the life within, then we lose the ability to bring life to others and, and to br- give life to others. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm so thankful for you and this conversation, Phyllis. You have really um, help me today to um, know I got to step up my little um, inside game. You know, I got to step up because ladies, I'm telling you, Phyllis, um, she is the owner of Beast Mom Fitness. Um, but this lady has um, been working with me for a long time to get me to the place where I will feel comfortable in the skin I am in. And I'm going to tell you honestly and transparently with all my heart that she is a powerful inspiration and motivation to have helped me to do that. Aww, and thank um, you. no, it's the truth. I don't speak that's nothing but the truth. This is the truth. <laughs> and, and I'm so thankful that not only am I feeling good this and with my mind shift changing on health and not weight, that I feel better getting the weight off than before when I was solely focused on I have to weigh a certain way. Right. I have to weigh a certain way. I have to look a certain way. Now right. I am the weight will come off when you start yes. feeding your body yes. the way you're supposed to. Yes. And nutrition is the easy part. Well, easy-ish part, but moving your body is important too. And it doesn't have to be a hard workout. Get outside, go for a walk, go out there with your partner, clear your head, get the blood flowing and pumping. It also helps get the the toxins out of your body too. So um, don't look at health and fitness as something you have to do because the world thinks you're supposed to look like this. Think it as something that you have the power to change the way you age. Right. Right. And moving your body doesn't mean, and we do need to get outside because ladies, we need that vitamin D. We need the air. We need the sun. But even if you just love to move your body by dancing through the house while you're cleaning it up, whatever you can do to get your body moving, get moving and and for at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. At least. That's what fitness, that's what Phyllis told me. So (laughs) I'm just passing that on. It helps with your (laughs) mental clarity. It really does. And if that's all you can muster up today is to just go outside for a walk, that's a step in the right direction. And the fact that you actually have decided to do that puts you ahead of so many people. And I don't want people to be under the misconception that, okay, well, I eat my vitamin D, I'm fine. No, no, no. The sun on your skin is what activates those cells to make vitamin D out of the food that you put into your body. It's just not one of those things you can just take. Right. So um, I think people misunderstand that too. They're like, oh, I eat it. Right. Right. (laughs) The sun on your skin is what causes the chemical reaction in your body for that vitamin D to be produced. Absolutely. So you need you need to get outside. And I know I, I know women that struggle with depression and they're like, I can't even think about going out of the house. Sugar causes depression. Mm -hmm. Not 100%. So yes, you do have to have the the biological precursors for it, but it will intensify it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that could be your first first experiment. Get a notebook and notice how you feel after every, not every single thing, because that might seem tedious, but let's start with the sugar. How do you feel after you eat sugar? from your emo- your emotional standpoint, mental clarity, energy, write it down mm-hmm. and start eliminating some sugar and write down how you're starting to feel. That's the first step in hacking your own bowel individuality because your food definitely affects how you show up every single day. Yes, tracking is very important for me. Tracking what I eat is really helpful for me to understand why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling on any given day. And it's been very helpful for me to understand what I shouldn't eat if I get palpitations because I'm right. trying to see what was going on that day in my food. What what did I eat right. to make me have these palpitations? And then I can eliminate that thing out of my right. diet. So yes. And you know what's awesome about that is doesn't it feel better to say, oh, I'm eliminating that because it gives me heart palpitations instead of I'm eliminating that because I want to lose weight. Right. It does. There's no power in that last statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it empowers me to be healthy so my 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 uh, heart can beat right, you know, to right. for me so I can just take this out of my diet because I don't want to walk around with palpitations all day. I want to feel exactly. Good. So this is all about feeling great and actually being great from the inside out. Exactly, it is exactly. It's not. It's it's not. I gotta lose weight. The weight will come off when you balance your hormones. It's about I want to feel good, Absolutely. and I want to feel worn down and 
like laying on the sofa all day. Like if I decide to lay on the sofa all day, it's because I made the choice to, not because I don't have the energy. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So Phyllis, is there anything else you want to tell us before we end this fabulous conversation? And then we're going to get you all information for you to reach Phyllis because she has programs to fit, um, I think, every woman in every situation, honestly and truthfully. And she Pretty has much. Fabulous program she has doing right now that I'm doing with her. It's a 10 day detox program. And this has made me feel fabulous. Look at my skin. It's glowing. Look at my skin. I know, it's my skin, skin is glowing. So and, and, and so far, ladies, I will tell you, I am seven pounds down from this 10 day detox. So I am excited. It is due to Phyllis's um, heavy research, all of her educational background, and, and even her experience with weight loss and fitness that has caused these programs to be highly effective. And she has a, a following of women who can testify to Aww. her um, her program. So please, please, please look her up. But Phyllis, I'm gonna let you end this with whatever you wanna tell us and then also give us information on how we can find you. Um, so I'm just Phyllis Thompson on Facebook. Um... I'm trying to think. You can reach me at thompsonphil at AOL.com. Yes, I'm still on AOL. I have a Gmail, but I never check it. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, that's really it. Like, if you want, I can go over your nutrition with you, um, kind of see where your imbalances are, customize a plan for you to, to just take control of your aging, right? Um, yes, I have a ton of programs, but honestly, my heart is in helping women control the way we age because we don't have to. And I've said it so many times. We don't have to age like our aunts and mother did. We Absolutely. really don't. Um, and I, I, seeing my mother age the way she did has is heartbreaking. So that's why I'm just like, listen. And, and then honestly, most people don't realize if you have children, and they're small, still small. Mine are adults now, so the damage is done. <laughs> but they don't necessarily listen to what you say. They watch what you do, and they do what you do. Mm -hmm. So if they're watching you make all these feel-good foods that aren't helping you live a healthy, happy life, and they're going to grow up with the same habits, and then they're going to have to go through the same cycle. So teach them how to take care of themselves is my message, right? Um, because they that my heart breaks for when I hear mom say my daughter's being bullied for her weight and and then yet mom is still making the same choices mm -hmm. instead of teaching her daughter. And I'm like, you have the power to change all of this. We can't change that children are mean, but we can change we can change what we teach our kids. Exactly. And that's all I really should say about that. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but anyway, I got off on a rant. I do that a lot, y'all. Um, so you can reach me at Phyllis Thompson Phil at AOL.com. I am Phyllis Thompson on Facebook. I am Beast Mom underscore fitness on Instagram. Um, and yeah, just, you know, we'll go through what you're dealing with and how to fix it. Well, I will definitely put all of Phyllis's information in the podcast uh, description and also in the description box below and YouTube. So I want to thank you all. And this was just is really what um, hit my heart when she was talking about teaching. Um, you know, as a child, you know, what my mom showed me is what taught me. So, you know, Phyllis can show you, she can teach you so she can reach you. And then you by, you know, by you doing what Phyllis is asking you to do, how she brings you through your program, whatever plan or program you choose with her, I promise you, you will not regret it if you follow her instructions because she is an awesome teacher and she has lived it. And I am a witness. <laughs> she has lived it. And because she has lived it and has come through it, I mean, she is what, a WBFF fitness oh, model? Oh, man. Yes. I'm a WBFF amateur. <laughs> amateur fitness, fitness competitor. Model. But um, I promise you, she is amazing. You won't regret um, even speaking with Phyllis. She's my personal trainer and personal friend. And I so appreciate you and honor you for the privilege of sharing this information today. So thank you. Thank so you so much. Um, it was wonderful. I'm so happy to serve, you know. Um, how can I help? That's that's what wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So thank you again so much. I appreciate you. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Coffee and Conversations. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.